Hello. You may not be able to tell by looking at me, but I am missing something. A zip code. You see, when I was six years old, I became a road schooler. My mother moved my homeschooling out of the house and into a recreational vehicle. She sold our home, bought a camper van, packed up her work laptop, and we hit the road. For the next 12 years, we lived and volunteered at parks across the United States. We visited friends and made many side trips in the car. I was fortunate to have the state and national parks as my classroom. My world was filled with museums, interpretive programs, tours, night sky lectures, turtle nest counts, lessons in birding, and native plants. I also had workbooks and took standardized tests each year to keep up with my peers. We traveled across the US several times over the years. We would park for anywhere from two days to two years. My family was asked repeatedly if we were in the witness protection program. <laughs> it's true, this lifestyle created some unusual circumstances. When I had braces, my mother kept us within a 500-mile radius of the orthodontist. I have my friends categorized by their time zones. There were also some unique advantages. Learning US geography was a breeze. I was never told to clean my room because I didn't have one. Every morning after folding up my bed, our routine was to get the work done and then go explore or volunteer. Most people think that I had an isolated childhood, but I didn't. Instead of being limited to the kids at my school and after-school activities, I got to meet kids and adults from all over. In different states, I attended classes, joined clubs, and went to camps. I got to meet a lot of students from private schools, public schools, and home schools around the United States. This opened my eyes to ways children learn, and I made some important observations. I believe every child's education should be guided by three components. IQ, EQ, and the third is what I call NQ. We expect education to increase a student's IQ, or their intelligence quotient, through reading, writing, arithmetic, and computer skills. It's not just IQ that leads to success in life. We also need EQ, the emotional quotient. These are the interpersonal skills we use to relate to other people. Since 1990, multiple studies have revealed EQ to be a critical predictor of the level of success we have throughout our lives in terms of mental health, job performance, and relationships. According to a LinkedIn site from 2018, 57% of employers value EQ more than IQ. How did I develop my EQ? Through volunteering. I gave tours at museums and different historic sites, so I became accustomed to speaking with people from all ages and walks of life. One day, after giving a group of teachers a tour of a lighthouse, one of them came up to me and said, it is so strange to have a 13-year-old look me in the eye. We have a family friend who recently went back to teaching. She says that middle school kids avoid her gaze even more so now than 20 years ago. So how do we raise a child's emotional intelligence? By having a continuous flow of people of all ages and walks of life to interact with. Children don't get a lot of practice at making a good first impression. With more opportunities to meet new people, we, will, we learn to sink or swim. I have a friend who only interacts with one senior citizen. It's his grandmother, and he's known her all his life. We need to meet new people. I have another friend that says he'll never visit Switzerland because he has a mean neighbor from there. <laughs> like the cheese, there are a lot of holes in that theory. <laughs> Limiting children to a group of the same aged peers from year to year with only one adult in the room makes it difficult to develop a child's emotional intelligence. The only other time in our lives when we are restricted to being surrounded by people of the same age group is when we go into a nursing home. <laughs> when I was 12, we spent two years on a tiny coastal Georgia island where we lived by ourselves and managed a small campground. At the time, there was no cell service, internet, or landline telephone. 
Groups would come via the ferry to camp for anywhere from three days to a week. Many were school groups with teachers nice enough to include me in their programs. I saw that when students are with their peers, they avoid interacting with both adults and younger kids. I also noticed that they were so busy interacting with each other that they rarely paid much attention to nature. This brings me to one more quotient that I would argue is even more important than IQ or EQ, and that is why I call NQ, the nature quotient. According to biochemist Elizabeth Willett, the lack of knowledge that humans have regarding the respect for nature is one of the biggest hazards to the environment. We are raising generations of people to be connected to the World Wide Web instead of the web of life. Most children are taught using books, screens, and lectures. Not only is this physically unhealthy, as it requires students to be sedentary most of the time, it also limits most instruction to being inside of a building, whether it be at home or school. Screen time habits have increased even more so since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. According to North Carolina State University, children need outdoor solitary time to bond with nature. We all can raise our NQ by spending unstructured time in nature without the distraction of peers. Outdoor, nature-based experiential education comes in many forms. Camps, outward-bound programs, local parks, and nature clubs. There are countries around the globe that offer forest schools where kids are taught in the woods no matter what the weather. Even in the middle of a city, we can find a park, select a tree in it to visit throughout the year, and notice the changes in the leaves, the animals in it, and its surroundings. Everything can be taught using more than just IQ as a goal. Here's some personal examples. When I was 10, I attended a wild edible herb camp in Massachusetts. In addition to raising my IQ by learning much about botany, my EQ grew through gathering plants and preparing meals with others. As for NQ, to this day, I recognize those wild edible plants when I run across them and understand the value they hold for the ecosystem. As a member of 4-H, when we were in Georgia, my IQ improved when I learned about the recycling process. My EQ grew through organizing a group for a beach sweep. The NQ portion was in seeing the negative impact of litter upon nature. In Washington State, my mother organized Nerf Wars with a large group of both grade school and high school players. I learned battle strategies and logistics, the IQ. The kids formed battalions with players that varied each week, EQ. I noted how the wind affected the trajectory of the bullets. NQ. I have tremendous respect for all teachers, whether they be private school, public school, or home school. Since my education was different from the standard practice, I've been fortunate to see the importance of a complete education with these three aspects in mind. I am 18 now, attending college, and still living in an RV. I'm aware that not all families are in the position to leave their homes and offer a full-time road school experience like I had. Travel is only one way to widen a child's view of the world. When we understand that we are a part of nature and feel our personal connection to it, we see the value and want to protect it. The health of the environment depends upon people with competent levels of IQ, EQ, and NQ. So where do you begin? All you really need to do is step outside and raise your NQ.